Chet Chat is underwritten by the law offices of Tim L. Fields and Team Bam Fitness Training. Design show, Chet Chat. Design show, Chet Chat. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs. I'm Chet Porsche, on LAE. I'm Chet Porsche, on LAE. Chet Chat, on LAE. Chet Chat, on LAE. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs. Hi, I'm Chet Porcho, and welcome to an all-new episode of Chet Chat. September is Childhood Obesity Awareness Month, so this episode is all about nutrition and activities for the whole family to exercise together. We also have Chef Brian Landry of Born Restaurant with a great dish for our cooking segments. So guys, let's do this. We can beat this. The spill in the Gulf, it's a catastrophe, but we will solve it. This is not a Gulf Coast issue. This is a national problem that requires a national solution. But what can you do to help? What do you have to offer? Your voice. Speak up. Add your name to the petition. Demanding restoration and protection of America's Gulf Coast. Sign it. Share it. Be the one. Be the one. RestoreTheGulf.com. Guys, welcome to Chet Chat. September is Childhood Obesity Awareness Month. So my first guest, registered dietitian, Molly Kimball from Auctioner Elmwood Fitness Center, is here to talk to us about some good nutrition and fitness for your kids. Hi, Molly. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited that you're here. So tell me, why is it so important that kids have good nutrition? Well, it's, you know, the habits start early. So mm -hmm. what they're starting with at age even just one, two, and three is what they're going to build on throughout their lives. So it's important that parents get these um, healthy habits with not only healthy eating, but also get exercise and activity habits as well. Yeah, so if you're a parent, what would be some good advice that you would give to a parent about a child and good nutrition and good health? The, the first thing I would say, first and foremost, is set a schedule and stick with it. Mm -hmm. and, and set those rules and stick with those rules. Because kids are going to know when, what limits they can push or not. And so uh, don't be at a short order to cook. So if right. you're, you have one thing for dinner, one option for dinner, that's what everyone has. Maybe there's one default that they can have at turkey sandwich if they uh -huh. don't like what's for dinner. The other thing I think is involving kids in the decision-making process. Yeah, I think that's important as well. It's huge. Yeah. So instead of just saying, here's what we're going to do, ask them, what do they want to have? Help them with the, have them help with the grocery shopping. So have them find, you know, throughout the store, almost like a scavenger hunt, have them pick out a few of their healthy items. Mm -hmm. Giving them options too, but not too many options. So giving them maybe two choices of what meals might be throughout the week and have them involved heavily in that planning. So you think it's important to get the kids involved in the shopping process? Yes, yes. Now a lot of people do gardens at home, mm -hmm. but that can be time consuming. Right. So if it's not having the garden where they can actually see it from the ground to their plate, right. at least having them choosing those things in the grocery store, having them start to look at the different types of produce. And one thing that I think is really cool too is in the produce section, there's so many different, very strange fruits and vegetables. Right. You know, so that can be a fun way of let's just experiment with different ones each time you go to the store trying something new. Do you think it's important that parents and kids when they go to the grocery store that they make a grocery list before they go. Does that help kind of explain to the kids why it's important to eat healthy as well? It does and it can also be a good teaching tool at that point for what are your proteins? What are your, you know, we've got to find some lean proteins that we're going to have for dinner throughout the week or whole grains. So it helps them know what are your carbs, what are your proteins, what are your healthy fats that you're, you know, can be a good teaching point. And so tell us about the youth fitness program at Elmwood. Yes. Oh, it's so great. So this is our youth fitness program is run by Michael Heim mm -hmm. and it's really far reaching. So we have at Elmwood Fitness Center exercise classes pretty much every afternoon and a variety of them. So we have scaled down workout equipment for kids. We have spinning bikes, weight machines, all different types of classes that we have there. We also have a registered dietitian oh, who works good. with our kids mm -hmm. programs as well, Alexis Wallbacker. We have a traveling youth fitness mobile unit wow. that actually it's like a big truck, mm -hmm. a big tour bus almost with scaled down equipment and Michael takes it to various schools so the kids at the schools can do the exercises on the fitness unit and we'll have nutrition talks there as well. That's great. Yeah, if you so had to cool. give a parent one bit of advice about how they can get their kids more healthy and more involved in a healthy eating process, what would that be? 
Gosh, you know, it's it's hard. I think one, it has to be you have to lead by example. Lead by example. And two, you can't hound them because right. if you're nagging, the first thing they're going to want to do is rebel. So it's leading by example and trying to do it with them and kind of rallying them with you as opposed to telling them you have to do this. Right. And what do you think the most important meal of the day for a kid is? I really have to say all oh, because it's all going to affect, you know, what you eat for breakfast is going to affect your attention and your spent your focus mid morning. Mm -hmm. I would say um, and then what you're having at lunch, of course, is going to be through the afternoon. One of the things I would say is the biggest thing for parents to look at, though, within each of those meals is to be sure your kids are getting enough protein, yeah. especially at breakfast. The easy thing is to grab a piece of fruit, piece of toast, mm -hmm. um, maybe just oatmeal. You're not getting enough protein. That protein can actually help to increase alertness, focus right. and actually kids who eat better and especially or eat breakfast and especially a protein rich breakfast do better in school they pay attention better and have better grades yeah that's that's definitely true so eat fit nola yes this is a really cool program so mm -hmm. eat fit nola it's a free program that we're offering through Oshner. our nutrition team at elmwood fitness center we're working with any restaurant in the city who wants to participate mm -hmm. we have about 35 restaurants either currently on board with us or coming on board and basically what we do is we work with the chef or the restaurant owner we identify the items on their menu that meet our criteria mm -hmm. for our nutritional criteria with little or no tweaking and then what we ask is that the chef or restaurant identify those menu items on their menu with the Eat Fit Nola logo wow. and so our criteria we have a tight criteria for sodium and saturated fat mm -hmm. and calories um, no white carbs at all and less than a teaspoon of added sugar so we're using pretty strict criteria so basically if you're at any of our participating restaurants and you look and you see that seal of approval you know that that's exactly an item that we would have our clients we would recommend that our clients ha choose at those restaurants. So, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, if it doesn't have a lot of fat or a lot of, you know, butter or calories in it, it doesn't taste good. How do you work with the chefs to get them to kind of understand that, you know, eating healthy is so important, not only to kids, but also to adults. Right. So, and that's, that's a really great point. And so one of the things that we make sure is that we're happy with the nutritional stats, but the chef and the restaurant owners have to be happy with the right. way it tastes. So I'd say every one of these dishes is just amazing. They're not going to let it go to the plate if it doesn't. And the great thing is when we're looking at the guidelines, it's low sodium, but we use the American Heart Association's restaurant guidelines mm -hmm. for that 800 milligrams of sodium. So it's still that's some. A lot of sodium exactly. Yeah. So We've still got a little bit of wiggle room mm -hmm. there, and it's low saturated fat, less than 10% of calories from that. So that's still, you can have a little bit of butter right. or a little bit of even bacon or cheese on some right. of these things to still have some of that flavor in there. So um, I would say it's, it's tight guidelines. Um, we base them on the American Heart Association's guidelines, and then we take it a few steps further. But it still gives enough room for flavor in there. And these chefs are creative. They're, they're just right. been amazing to work with. I love it. And a few restaurants before we wrap up that actually are participating in oh, this. Oh, gosh. We have the full spectrum. So we have Muriel's. We have Appaline, Patois. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Fury's, Yield Collagen. And so what I, what I would encourage anyone, if you have your favorite restaurants that you go to, you want them to participate, all they have to do is reach out to me. Email me, call me, or you reach out to me, and I can contact the restaurant. So we just want any restaurant that wants to participate, we want them on board. What's your email address? My email address is mkimball at ashner.org and I think we'll have on the screen the yeah. website is right. um, ashner.org backslash eatfitnola and my contact information is there as well. well. Well we could probably sit here and talk forever but yes. before we wrap up just one bit of advice you can give to parents or even to kids to try to convince them to eat healthier. The biggest thing I think is when you do take care of your body you are putting good food into your body and getting that activity not just the physical uh, benefits a healthy right. weight and all this but how much better they feel right so their energy is so much better they're not sluggish they're not getting those three o'clock energy slumps the the immediate difference in how you feel I would think is a great motivator well thank you it's been very very useful information and I'm sure the viewers would appreciate it thank you you're welcome guys stay right there we'll be right back You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Guys, for today's cooking segment, we have Chef Brian Landry of Born Restaurant. Chef, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about Born Restaurant. 
Bourne is named after Lake Bourne, right mm -hmm. next to Lake Pontchartrain. It's where myself and Chef Besh grew up fishing. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of our seafood from the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of which comes from Lake Bourne, so natural fit. Okay, so your restaurant is predominantly seafood, but you have other things there as well. Correct. So we do 80% uh, of the menu is local seafood, mm -hmm. and then we pepper it with different kinds of pork and duck and all kinds of great things. All kinds of good things. Yeah. So this show is about um, National Childhood Obesity Month. Yes. So a lot of people sometimes mistaken that you can't make a good meal if it's not loaded with a lot of like fat and sodium and stuff. Right. But you're. We were talking earlier and you're saying that's not true. You can actually have a really good meal and it still be healthy but still taste good. Right. So one of the things about Bourne is we tend to highlight the Spanish side of Creole cuisine. Mm -hmm. So we use a lot more olive oil and vinaigrettes than a traditional French Creole right. restaurant. So we're introducing flavor <laughs> by, by using less fatty products, a lot less butter, and barely any heavy cream. Okay. So what are we going to make today? So today we have this beautiful Gulf swordfish. Beautiful. And we're getting a ton of wonderful fish from the Gulf right Right now. So we're going to do a simple seared gulf fish, okay. but then we're going to make this wonderful vinaigrette with olive oil and verjus. We have a beautiful rice salad. Okay. We're going to steam some mussels and make a little vinaigrette to put right over the top. Okay. So we're introducing lots of flavor, but keeping it nice, light, and healthy. Okay, perfect. So the, the first step we're going to do really is we're going to um, cook these mussels okay. and all the juice from the mussels we're going to help flavor the rice. Gotcha. Once we get the rice going, we'll sear our fish and then we'll put it all together. And you're going to put me to work at some point, right? I, I definitely will. Okay. Did a little bit of work ahead of time, but um, Smart not man. too, too much. <laughs> so, Did a little bit of it ahead of time. Right. So we're just going to, this is a little Spanish olive oil. Okay. We have a little bit of shallot right here. Okay. And some garlic. And we'll sweat that out. Mm -hmm. And here we have a little bit of chili flake. So do you, why do you think it's important for like kids to eat healthy? But I see like you have all this stuff that's like really pretty. Do you think this would appeal to a kid if they were going to eat this? I, uh, I do. And I have three small kids of my own. Gotcha. So, so you um, know. And I find ways to introduce them to food, but maybe cut back on some of the seasoning so it's a little bit more friendly to their palate. Yeah, so while you're cooking that, tell us a couple of ways you introduce stuff to your kids. Um, I think one of the easiest ways on the grill. Okay. Um, so my kids, you know, if they want hot dogs, for example, for lunch, right. I'll always grill off a couple of pieces of zucchini or squash, mm -hmm. and that way they're getting a vegetable, I'm barely introducing any fat, and to be honest with you, most of the time they'll eat a lot more zucchini than they will hot dogs. Really? Not because it's forced mm. on them, but I think they genuinely like the taste gotcha. better. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we have those mussels in there. Okay. And this is a little verjus, which is kind of like a white wine. It's a um, fermented grape juice. Okay. And this is going to help the mussels to steam open. Do you find that fish is harder to cook than basically like meat? I find fish a lot easier to cook because mm -hmm. the cooking time is so much shorter than okay. people realize. Okay. When cooking fish, the worst thing to do is overcook, overcook it. it. And that's what scares me about cooking. And so with fish, what's great is most of the time it's a four or five minute cook time and that's it. Gotcha. So we have a hot skillet here. Okay. We have our mussel steaming. So again, we're going to introduce just a little bit of olive oil to the pan and get that hot. And olive oil is good. That's good healthy fats. It is. It is. So if you'll help me season this fish up. Okay, sure. I always, I like to cook with either kosher salt or sea salt mm -hmm. because you can get a good grip on it. Okay. And it's a uh, larger grain salt, so okay. it dissolves on your tongue, and you don't have to use as much salt. So you don't use as much of Ex this salt. Exactly. Okay, so I love some salt. <laughs> me, you and me both, <laughs> okay, but so everything in moderation. What right? do I put next? A uh, little bit of pepper's fine. Okay. And then I'll flip those fish, and if you'll season them up on sure. that side as well. Absolutely. Hmm. I love getting my hands dirty. So that's that. That's perfect. Okay. And so I have a cast iron skillet here that we got hot already. Okay. And what we're going to do with this swordfish is just get a nice hard sear on both sides. Do you like to use a cast iron skillet? I loved cooking cast iron. Why is iron. that? I've heard. Uh, it's the original nonstick. Okay. Uh, so it's really easy to cook fish and things in it because nothing's going to stick to the pan. Right. As long as you keep it seasoned, don't use any. Uh, don't use soap on it very <laughs> okay. often, but yeah. Um, so you can see here, oh, the yeah. mussels have already steamed open. God, it smells amazing and, as well. And so the mussels release this wonderful liquid themselves. Uh -huh. So we're going to use some of that in, to flavor our rice. So okay. again, tiny bit of olive oil. Go ahead with a little bit of rice in there. Not all of it? No, that's plenty. Okay. Just for one or two dishes. Sure. We'll heat that up, and we're going to use a little bit of this 
to help keep our rice nice and moist and it introduces a lot of flavor. It smells amazing. Yeah, so we're off to a good start. So how long have you been a chef? I've been cooking about 17 years, wow. on and off. Uh -huh. uh, helped me get through college. Um, it's been a great job. I was thought about medical school for a while, but mm -hmm. the kitchen kept calling, so. What's, what part of the kitchen uh, I've worked like? all over. Uh -huh. um, being the chef in a kitchen, you spend a lot of time tasting food and right. making sure it's going out correct. But the creative process, yeah. just the social aspect of it, right. having people from all different walks of life in the kitchen makes it a lot of fun. Okay. Cool little trick with mussels, because uh, we're not going to serve the shells on this dish, but okay. when you get mussels, if you use one side of the mm. shell, you can actually peel okay. the mussels out, and they'll pop right out of the shells, and this will make it a little easier to eat on the dish. So Bourne is located in the Hyatt, right? It is. Uh -huh. um, we're right next to the Superdome, mm -hmm. so we got a Saints game yeah. coming up, so that should be a lot of fun. We'll just toss this like that. And we're gonna flip our fish. Guys, I wish you could smell this. It smells amazing. I cannot wait to taste this. I'm a fish eater. I mean, I, I, I love fish, but once again, I'm scared to cook right. it because I'm always afraid that I'm basically gonna overcook the fish. And so these mussels pop right out of the shell. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably give around 10 mussels to a dish. Okay. So that's probably enough for one entree right there. We can always come back and use, use the, the rest, rest of these to put in a salad or okay. make another batch of it. So we have our mussels. This is a little piquillo pepper, mm -hmm. which is a sweet red pepper. Right. We have some fresh thyme. Mm -hmm. We'll add a little bit of salt. More salt. <laughs> right. And then one more touch of olive oil. Okay. So. So everything's coming together. Okay. Rice is hot. One trick, we always want to taste, make sure. Yeah, that's important, right? I think we're off to a good start. Okay. We can stop the heat on this. You can see yeah. we have all the mussels and uh, verjou. So we'll put that right in the center of the plate. Wow. So that's a combination of quinoa and what else? So th that's a little rice blend we make, uh -huh. which is uh, basmati rice, wild rice, quinoa, orzo, and green split peas. Okay. Lots of flavor. My kids love stuff like this. Um, and it's a good, you know, quinoa is one of nature's uh, right. wonderful proteins. Right. So it's a real way to trick kids into eating healthy, healthy. food because there's a lot of flavor in that and they're going to gobble it up just like a normal white rice. Okay. But it's just got a lot more flavor. Cool thing about fish like swordfish is you definitely don't have to overcook them. Right when you get to the point where it's just got a little bit of give left, you know, uh -huh. right around there, it's cooked plenty. Uh, it's about a medium and we can put that right on top of our rice. Okay. I can't wait to taste it. We're going to turn the heat off on that guy. And then we're just going to spoon some of our mussels right over the top of the fish. And so we've introduced all kinds of wonderful flavors. One of the things when cooking, I think, you know, especially for my wife, one of the things I kind of get her to look for is when she's cooking is as you're tasting, Taste for salt and pepper, obviously, but a little bit of sugar sometimes, right. just a touch, uh, a little bit of acid. When you taste something and it feels really balanced, uh -huh. you know you're there. Well, so give me you that kinda... plate. You're trying to hide that from me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to taste this. Let me have this little spoon for you. Absolutely. So, so guys, I'm going to see I'm going to see if it tastes as good as it looks. Mm. That's delicious. Nice and fresh. Yeah, and you're right, it's very balanced. I love the way the um, the rice and the fish and the piquillo peppers kind of makes a really good balanced statement. Yeah. Delicious. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for being here. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Guys, stay right there. We'll be right back. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Cox Channel 14, Charter Channel 11 and 711, AT&T Channel 32 and 1032, Dish TV, Direct TV, and Over the Air Broadcast on Channel 32. 
Guys, you know, exercise is so important no matter what your age is. Here today is certified fitness trainer Brian Milan to show us some exercise techniques that basically the whole family can participate in. Brian, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me here, Chad. So, Brian, tell me a little bit about Team BAM Fitness and what exactly do you do? Well, as you said, I am a certified fitness trainer. I also have some other certification. One includes being a fitness, a youth fitness specialist. Which is important because this is Childhood Correct. Obesity this Month. This is Childhood Obesity Month. And uh, I operate a team uh, program, fitness program called Team BAM Fitness Training, mm -hmm. which is held at a small studio called the Authentic Strength and Performance Institute in Metairie. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the things I really like to do, one of the things I, I want to prove to people is really more educate and show them how we can be healthy and stay active. How can we do that, basically? Anything, you know, look, I'm going to show you something. I have this piece of equipment that I want to show you, okay? okay. It's an is it here? Piece of it. it is here. You ready? I'm going to get it for you. Okay. It's right here. It is my body. My body is my equipment. Right. Anybody can use it anywhere, home, park, vacation, even a gym. Mm -hmm. So this month is National Childhood Obesity Month, and you know school is back in. So when kids actually come home from school, they're going to be doing a lot of homework. They've been sitting all day. They're going to be sitting in the afternoon. How can a parent develop a home gym for their kids to get more active at home? Well, you know, it starts with uh, certain equipment, and you really don't need much. Again, like I said, you have your body. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also get more of a protective mat on the ground. This is what I brought with me today with us, and I use this at my own home gym at my house. So, guys, Brian just gave you a great tip. This is a do-it-yourself segment, so this is your do-it-yourself tip. You can actually get a home gym and do this at your house yourself. Right, and all it does is it pulls apart, uh -huh. put it back down, and there you go. Perfect, perfect. So I see you bought also some exercise equipment. I did. Are you going to make me do this stuff today? Absolutely. Chad, what I, do so you I'm think? taking my jacket off. So yep. what are we going to start off with first? Let's start off with the bands. This is actually one of my favorite equi pieces of uh, equipment to use. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and get you that red band, and I'll use this black one. Okay. And I know. You know you train with me, yes, so yes, you yes. love this equipment. Or I love this don't. band. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> so let's start off by showing the people how we could do a squat. And I'm going to show you. You step on it. Mm hmm Make sure that it's in the arch of your heel, okay. that way, arch of your foot, that okay. way it's protected under your feet. You're just going to pull up here, and we're just going to squat back. And you know, this is really great for anyone. Any, right. any youth uh, adult can use this and can do this exercise. Mm -hmm. There's not much to it, except you're using your body weight to squat, but now you got some resistance with this band. Yeah, I love, I love these bands. Yep. Okay, this is a must at a home gym. What's uh, the next thing you have? The next thing I have is the TRX. Okay. And again, this is another piece of equipment that I absolutely love. It is full body workouts. You can do anything mm -hmm. with this TRX that you could do in a gym. So th is this something that you can buy at a store or do they have to, or you can only use it with a personal trainer? Uh, you could buy it in a store, uh, probably online than in a store. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I, I definitely recommend you see someone that is, is a professional at using a TRX because it, it does take a little work and you need the uh, proper instruction. Okay, just well. to show us a little bit of this TRX. Check this out. All right. So for those people that really can't do push-ups on the ground too uh -huh. well, I'll put them in the TRX and we'll do a TRX chest press. Right. I'm in a, I'm in a plank, high plank, high push-up position. I'll drop down, bring my elbows back, and press away. Okay. Again, I'll show it again. It's real simple. It's just like I'm doing push-ups on the ground, except now I got a little support in my feet standing up. You know what I love about uh, what you do at your business is that the fact that this is National Childhood Obesity Month and kids can do this, but I love the fact that parents can actually do it with their kids. Exactly. How important you think that is for parents to be involved in a kid's exercise program? Well, uh, you know, for a parent, you know, set the example. Be the example. Your kids are going to do what you want to do, mm -hmm. right? So be the example, you know, get up, go outside, go for a walk. At kids these days, all yeah. they do is exercise their thumbs. Right. Texting, video games, whatever. So. Having the parent actually get involved and do some of the same exercises will help the child be more involved. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to do the same thing my dad did. Right. So, so that, that's something your, your parents will see you exercising. I mean, I'm sorry, the kid will see you exercising uh -huh. and they'll want to do the same things. So. How long should a kid exercise for and how many times a week? It could be any, I mean, really, it's a tough question. 15 to 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how active the kid is. How, the, the, how we can how we can do uh, during the activity process as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to be that kid's level of activity, that his level of fitness. Right. That'll tell you how much how long he should go. And so I see you bought one thing that pretty much even an uh, adult was familiar with, a jump rope. And I always think of when you use a jump rope, it's basically the most simple thing to do, but it could be the most effective thing that you can use. It is. Right? It means you got to realize the movement of a jump rope. You're coming here, so you're working your arms. You're hopping on your legs as well, so calves, arms, mm -hmm. abs, everything is getting some work. Now, I know a lot of adults who cannot use a jump rope, right. so 
It takes practice mm -hmm. in a child as well. They would need a lot of practice. And coordination. And coordination, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what you trying to say? <laughs> Um, let's not tell anyway. Yeah, that. let's not talk about that. And so, you know, another big thing that's really huge right now and for kids and adults is the kettlebell, right? Correct. So talk to us a little bit about the kettlebell, because, you know, if I was a kid and I saw that it could be a little bit intimidating. Talk to the parents and, you know, kind of tell them how easy it is to work with that, but also they can use it as well. Right. Well, with proper instruction, it can be as easy as one, two, three. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, they, they've been around for so long, just they're finally coming back into, right. the, into the fitness scene. And, you know, you could do a lot of things that you could do with a dumbbell, but there's things you can do with a kettlebell that you really can't do with a dumbbell. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's, it's as simple as uh, doing like kettlebell swings, which would really work legs and hips. So we, when I was working with uh, a lot of youth athletes, mm -hmm. I give them the kettlebell swings so they can develop strength in right. their hips uh -huh. and their glutes. But everybody needs it. Adults, kids, we all need it. Now, however, I wouldn't give, uh, say, a 10-year-old a kettlebell because <laughs> they may not have been developed yet right. in the brain uh, as best as a 13-year-old would be. Uh -huh. But, you know, we do have uh, kettlebells smaller in weight mm -hmm. that they can definitely use. I mean, I've given kettlebells to my nieces, uh, 10 years old, so right. it, it, they have fun with it. And, you know, the cool thing about all of this stuff here is you don't need but this much space to use right. it. So that's why I like using the kettlebells. And then kids don't feel intimidated going to a gym. Right. And you don't want to make them feel like you got to work out. Right. You want to just let them have fun doing it. So basically you're saying that you can use all these things. Parents can give this to kids in their rooms and they can use this in their rooms and, you know, develop some kind of exercise program. With proper instruction, yes. Okay. If you had to give a parent one bit of advice coming from you, from Team Bam Fitness, what would that be? I said it already. Be the example. You know, a kid's not going to be active if you're sitting on the couch watching TV eating a bag of potato chips. Okay. So a kid should, a parent should be active so that the kid can follow that parent lead. Okay. Well, this has been a great segment. If people wanted to get in touch with you, how would they go about doing that? Uh, they could go to uh, brianmeland.com or they can follow me on Twitter at Team Bam Fitness. Okay. And I think you have a tagline. You're going to tell New Orleans to what? Get moving, New Orleans. Brian, thank you so much for the great tips. You're welcome, chat. Boom. Guys, stay right there. We'll be right back. Because play might be the best way to fight obesity. Because staying connected makes my family stronger. Because a safe place after school can lead to success in school. Because physical activity is vital to my health and well-being. Because I need to make my world better. Because playing team sports teaches character and social skills. Because we need each other. Because we need each other. Because we need each other. How would you like a signed Saints poster? It's simple. Just email us at chatchatshow at gmail.com with your email address and we'll mail it to you. Or you can stop by my store at 3652 Magazine Street and pick one up. I hope you've enjoyed today's show and got some great ideas. I'd like to thank all of my guests for being here today. If you have a local business or an organization that you would like to see featured on an upcoming episode of Chet Chat, it's simple. Just email your suggestions to chetchatshow at gmail.com. And for more information on this episode and other episodes of Chet Chat, just go to my website at www.chetporshowdesign.com and click on my blog. And be sure to follow me for design updates on Twitter at Chet Porsche. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs for New Orleans. I'll see you guys next month. Chet Chat is underwritten by the law offices of Tim L. Fields and Team Bam Fitness Training.